Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing pony, because when it comes to cinema, humans cannot be trusted. And believe it or not, we are currently in our studio with a fireplace provided by our horrible benefactors, the Hallmark Channel. Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for the fact that they aired the dog who saved Christmas. Also, Greg, why is your damn cat here? Oh yeah, just for the middle of our review. I don't know what you normally do with Sergeant Fuzzy Boots. I don't think we could get past the cat in the studio. You know Colin has allergies. Yeah, you're right. Who cares about Colin? He's just here to try and pay off his student loans. Anyway, I don't even know what movie we're reviewing today, so... This is completely new territory for me. So, why don't we find out what the movie is? This is gonna be the worst Christmas ever. A very minty Christmas? Minty Christmas? Of all of the flavors you could go with, you went with the worst flavor in every universe to ever exist ever. Mint. Okay, yeah, but sure. That doesn't even come close to the amount of problems wrong with this fucking thing. Half this stuff doesn't make sense. The animation is choppy. Even for 2005, the characters are eh, the story is garbage. And this movie drags. It's boring. It's just a snore fest. I don't know how it's supposed to retain the attention of children at all! Even then, kids may be stupid, but they're really not this stupid. Come on, kids. I'm giving you credit here. Y you're not this stupid, okay? Th no one is this stupid. Honestly, I don't even know where to begin with this fucking movie. But, gotta start somewhere. And what better place to do a Christmas review than right here, in front of the Yule Log, cozy and warm. Unlike the, when we were up north in that cave and it was absolutely freezing. Anyway, without further ado, let's suffer through a very minty Christmas. Again, minty. MINTY! So our film opens up with Ponyville. Not the good Ponyville, the bad one. The one that they had before it was completely redesigned. Also, just immediately, right off the bat, we have a fucking song number. Right on frosty nights with a wreath on every door Drifting through the air is the last uh -huh. that sounds just a bit too much like the singing voice of Twilight Sparkle. Snowflakes in a swirl, every boy and every girl bundled up in red and green. Time has come to welcome spring, and all things warm and green, but it's also time to say goodbye. Is it just me? I really don't think it's just me. The, the resemblance is just uncanny. That's what I love about Christmas. Have a very merry world this year. Oh yeah. Have a very Merry Christmas this year. You don't need to worry about next year. Yeah, don't worry about that one. We don't want to make more than one of these holiday specials because animating is expensive. No, I'm serious. This is 2005 and look at the animation. It's choppy as all hell. I've seen people on Newgrounds do a better job. No, seriously. Anyone remember those Clay World animations from way back in the day? They were still making these in 2005 and they looked way better than this. It's and I mean, sure, that was just one guy in his fucking bedroom moving slabs of clay around, but hey, it looked way better than this did. At least there, it looked like we went above the 15 frames per second mark. Anyway, this song goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. Oh my god. Again, somehow this is supposed to retain the attention of children. Keyword here is somehow. This song doesn't even establish anything. 
It's just, oh hey, it's Christmas. You could have just said it was Christmas. You didn't need to devote an entire song to it. They don't even go around the town that much in this song, and I figured they would do that, especially given the easy product placements they could do there. No, seriously, even this fucking castle, you could actually buy that. It folds out and turns into a Barbie Dreamhouse wannabe bullshit. They've been doing this for years. They're, they're still doing it. It's Twilight Sparkles Blue. Anyway, the song finally ends, and we run into these two ponies who are doing something. And I gotta let you guys know that this is where the lip syncing of this movie really, really shines. But what if we made it silver glitter and blue and blueberry flavored? That's impressive that you can say an entire sentence without closing your damn mouth. Cat, what are you doing back there? You, what, you, you sniffing something? Something smell funny over there? Did you pee back there? How can you say that? I love this part of Christmas. <laughs> and I love your voice. It sounds like you smoked an entire Marlboro factory. Seriously, of all the voices you could go with, you went with one that sounds like she smokes a lot. So anyway, these ponies are trying to put together the candy cane that's gonna go on top of the Christmas tree in the middle of town. Um, okay, what happened to Twinkle Wish? Didn't he go on top of the tree? You know, Twinkle Wish? Twinkle Wish from the first My Little Pony movie that we reviewed? Twinkle Wish Adventure? No? Nothing? No? Anyway, we cut over to these ponies who are building a snowman. Which is weird. I really shouldn't have to explain why it's weird, but... I actually do. I suppose I'm just wondering why at the end of the movie we see two ponies building a snow pony. Also, I'm about done with this. This being this and this. I could also bring up the point that in order for there to be a Christmas in the first place, Jesus Christ would have had to existed within this universe. But I'm not gonna be that big of a dick. So anyway, we finally get introduced to our main character, and they don't even drop her damn name, but this is Minty. It's just... Minty. She may or may not have obsessive compulsive disorder, but she has a, this obsession with making things perfect. Perfect! Oh, maybe this head was a smidge to the left? Mm, no. Oh, maybe a scooch to the right. <gasps> Alright, so you probably noticed it, but this is another issue with this damn movie. The pacing is ass! I seriously think that the fan animation Double Rainboom had better pacing than this movie. Wow, God. You have no idea how hard it was for me to say that. Anyway, she takes off one of her socks and uses it as a scarf because apparently socks can get that long. Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. This year's Christmas host. I first want to thank last year's Christmas host. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that's Pinkie Pie. Rainbow Dash. We do love you, Rainbow Dash. You made last year's Christmas so colorful and filled with, well, rainbows. Wait, wait, wait. why would Rainbow Dash ever be put in charge of anything pertaining to decorating? Why, thank you. Thank you, darlings. How darling of you all. Socks, darling? How darling. Alright, I'll bite. Why the fuck is Rainbow Dash more akin to rarity? I oh, know, no, it's like, oh no, we need someone more akin to fashion. What, what, what's the name gonna be? Oh, no, I'm fucking, I don't know, fucking Rainbow Dash, yeah. Yeah, that's good, do that. No! Stop it! Stop! Stop it! Yep, that's true, very true. It's down a big night. He flies no matter what. Fun fact, no one in the fucking universe has your voice. Oh, hi, Mints. 
thought that was you. Hey, nice sock. Thanks. They're one of my favorites. <laughs> of course, I do love my green socks the best, or maybe my silver sparkle socks are my favorite, but I really like my rainbow socks and my glow-in-the-dark socks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who am I kidding? I love all my socks. Oh my god, this pony is obsessed with socks! And to make it extra special this year, I have asked one of our new friends to place it on top of the tree! Yay! Uh, okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're never gonna learn her name then? It's just... a new friend? Yeah, well, that, like, maybe you should have opened with her fucking name. So, we're, we're just not gonna get any details on this character? Like, where did she come from? Why is she considered a new friend? We're just not gonna get any, like, background to any of these fucking characters? Just... Uh, none? What's... Ah, uh, this film makes me wanna scream! <laughs> So Starcatcher puts the candy cane on top of the tree, and the tree starts to glow for some reason. Maybe the candy cane is radioactive, and it will kill everyone, and then everything will be happy. Anyway, j just seconds after this happened, everyone leaves after... ...running in place for a few seconds. But Minty's need for everything to be perfect has her... <laughs> Don't worry, it's dumb. Maybe it needs to be a smidge to the left. Oh no. <gasps> Maybe a scooch to the right. Uh, higher? Uh, lower. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! <laughs> Seconds later, Minty gets the brilliant idea to fix it herself. Unfortunately, thanks to her stupidity, she didn't grab a ladder and decided to grab a hot air balloon. That, or going to get someone with wings to do it. Oh, I wish I were a better pilot. Maybe uh, yeah, no, wrong again. Pilot would imply that you fly a fucking plane. Cause see, here's the thing, hot air balloons are like the most unpredictable aircraft in the universe. It's 80% wind, the wind is doing most of the work here. The fact that you're blaming your piloting skills has absolutely nothing to do with it. I can do this. I know I can. I just have to give it a little more oomph. <sighs> Just a little closer. Ugh. If I could just move the bottom a little. Get on with it! We uh, cut away from that as they light up the castle for some reason. Oh, wow. That castle's taken a long time. If only there was a way to make the pacing not suck! Oh, if only there was a way. You ever notice that Hasbro still has this issue? Just look at friendship games. The pacing is all off. Only in this case, it's too fast. As compared to this, where it's too slow. My guess is that at some point they tried to change up the pacing a little bit. Only, they went a bit too fast. So they light up the castle and it's. It, well. What the fuck was that? Extreme close up! Anyway, Minty's constant fiddling with the candy cane causes it to fall off the tree and. Then, oh! Jeez! What is that thing made of fucking glass? It just breaks into ten. Million pieces upon hitting the ground! Forgive me, but I was unaware that candy canes were this breakable. Actually, you ever notice that a bunch of stuff this time around the holidays is breakable? Christmas ornaments are a big one in that category. Minty goes to tell Pinky that she broke the candy cane, but it's either her half-ass attempt at telling them, or their half-ass attempt at listening 
that she fails to get the fucking message across. Also, Pinkie Pie is driving me fucking crazy in this movie. Listen to her fucking voice. Minty, I am sure everything will be okay, no matter what you did. But right now, I still have tons to do. Stop talking slowly and carefully like you're carefully glancing over the fucking lines. Oh my god, nothing pisses me off more than when they have to emphasize every single word to try and make it easier for kids to understand what they're saying. You can't baby children like that. Just throw the words out there, for God's sake, and let them figure it out. They're not stupid, okay? They're not Stupid! You are! You're, you're stupid! You're the stupid ones! But, um, I have something to tell you. You see, I didn't mean it. I mean, I, I was just trying to make it straight. All, all I meant, well, you know, I mean, oh, and then I slipped and I grabbed it instead of, it, and, you know, it, it kind of slipped and then it just sort of happened. Yeah, okay, no, no, right there. She doesn't even put up an effort to fucking say what she did. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Oh, sweet Celestia, she's legitimately stupid. Like, uh. Also, another obvious point that I'd like to bring up is that literally anyone in town could go and see that the goddamn candy can has been smashed to pieces. Seriously, does nobody go over to see if the candy cane is still there? I mean, it's like the most important part of the tree. No one looks to see the most important part of the tree. This is the stupidest, stupidest plot hole ever. Everyone, everyone in this town is an idiot. Everyone is an idiot and does not pay attention to anything. So anyway, the movie l literally fades to black and then cuts back to later that night. Oh, and this explanation is long overdue, but they need the candy cane on the top of the tree so that Santa can find the town. They needed a candy cane for this. Here's a crazy idea. Maybe he fucking remembers where your town is. Or maybe use something other than a fucking candy cane that breaks easily. You're telling me that this fucking candy cane is the sole thing that makes it so that they can get their free shit on Christmas Day. As soon as this movie is over, I'm taking the DVD out and throwing it in the fire. So we cut over to Minty's house, and her house is literally filled with socks, where she's fallen into depression. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Oh, but before we do that, uh, it's worth noting that this scene has like my favorite still in the whole goddamn movie. And now that I look at it, her legs like on the top there, and it's like all misshapen looking. For fuck's sake, movie, I can't even enjoy this. I've ruined everything for everybody. Aw, oh, cheer up, Tabitha St. Germain. In five years, you'll be voicing Rarity, who is, unarguably, the most racist character in the entire show. Probably should have mentioned earlier that Minty is voiced by Tabitha St. Germain. Anyway, Minty comes up with a terrible idea. I will be Santa and give everyone a great present. Oh look, the main character is taking the incentive to make themselves be sad to this year, just like 10 million other Christmas specials. Unfortunately, there's a massive flaw in her plan. She doesn't have the means to give everyone a great present. Socks! <laughs> she does not have the means to give anyone in town a great present. Can be plain or fancy. Oh my god, are you serious? Okay, yeah, no, I feel like I should be upset about this, but I, I, I am just 
and a loss for words. Oh, and need I remind you that there is a licensed Hasbro movie that is encouraging parents to get their kids a pair of socks? Oh my god. It's really that stupid, isn't it? You think I'm joking here? No. This song is literally declaring that the greatest of Christmas gifts ever is socks. Socks! That is the polar opposite of a good gift for Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no, I can't get past this. No one likes socks for Christmas. No, seriously, what if some parents actually did that and actually went through with it? What do you think their reaction would be? I think it would be something like this. You must be appreciative of everything you get. Mm -hmm. No. Socks for the Christmas. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? No, seriously, it's just amazing to me that... This is actually what they're going with? Socks? They're actually going with socks. Yeah, okay. I can't imagine Oprah Winfrey giving out socks on Oprah's favorite things, okay? I just can't see that. This is ridiculous. It might be the stupidest thing I've ever seen in a Christmas special. And I've seen some really stupid Christmas specials. You have to take into account, I watched The Dog Who Saved Christmas Vacation. Twice. So, Minty's seriously gonna go through with this whole sock thing? No! Seriously! She puts on a god dang song and dance routine with, like, the whole town about this! I'm sorry, but no. I can't get past it! It... It sucks for Christmas! You don't do that! Some of you may call this nitpicking, but just look at how over-glorified they're making this! They could have just as easily told you to buy the Pony Princess Castle or something. But no, you are shoving socks in your viewer's face. Do you people realize that we are watching a movie that is meant to sell little toys of plastic ponies? And they're saying that, nah, just get them socks. What is it, Very Minty Christmas? Seriously, which is it? You're sending me extremely mixed signals. They're sitting there in a board meeting discussing, all right, now what's popular with the kids in 2005? Hmm, socks. I give up, that's it. Anyway, Minty goes through with this whole Santa thing and succeeds to break into everyone's house just by opening the front door. Also, instead of putting it under the tree, she's gonna decide to hang them on the fireplace. Which, for some reason, everyone has a brush hanging on the fireplace. Also, why is this everyone in town that just hangs a brush on their goddamn fireplace? Not to mention that Minty isn't even going all out and giving them a pair of socks. She's giving them one singular sock for everyone in town. Merry Christmas, Minty. Here, I, I, I gave you half of a gumball. Only half a gumball. I was too cheap, sorry. Anyway, uh, she manages to wake up, uh, Pinkie Pie, and then confesses that she broke the candy cane on top of the tree, FINALLY! Minty, Minty, Minty! I know, I know, I know! Yeah, um, okay, no, that, that line was too dumb, I, I, I gotta leave. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, Worn out faces. Anyway, Minty comes up with the brilliant plan to go to the North Pole and tell Santa where Ponyville is in the course of one night. You know, this started out funny, now it's just kind of sad. I'm going to 
She then meets up with Thistle Whistle at the pl place where they, I guess, where they park the hot air balloons. Yeah. Wanna come with me? When you say with you, do you mean fly into the clouds with you, or do you mean wave goodbye and wish you good luck with you? Okay, so apparently this is the scene where we discover that Thistle Whistle is a complete sack of shit. Also, what the fuck? What do you think she means, genius? Anyway, she leaves and breaks stuff on her way out. Good job. And it is only now that everyone else in town notices that the candy cane is missing. Only now that they notice this. Oh no, wait, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. Ponies are born with 98% blindness in both eyes. I, 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 I should know this. Because that's complete and utter bullshit! Everyone in town just doesn't fucking pay attention to the going-ons of whatever. Couldn't think of a word. Anyway, now with the entire town knowing what's going on, they decide to assemble their airship fleet, apparently, and go after Minty. And of course, nothing says drama like a goddamn hot air balloon spinning out of control. Oh, it's so riveting. My Little Pony, very minty Christmas. Completely action-packed. Sweet Celestia, we've really let the violence get out of hand lately. So they managed to get the balloon stuck on Branch, and Thistle Whistle gets tied up for... Because reasons! But thankfully, literally in the next fucking shot, the fleet of airships finds them. Oh, thank God. For a second there, I thought I would have to be worried about something in this movie. I mean, quite frankly, I wanted one of them to die. That didn't happen. I never got my Christmas wish. Anyway, they all make it to the North Pole, and yeah, Santa already left. It gave them a note and everything. I ruined Christmas for everybody. Oh, don't worry, Tabitha St. Germain. Some magical bullshit happens. And then Santa shows up anyway. Deeming all of this pointless. Also, I might add, as they're flying back to town, we get this horrifying shot. Asatoma! Oh yeah, and speaking of which, I love that when they're flying back, they have to have a small recap of everything that's happened in this 40-minute movie. I really don't think kids have that short of a memory span. It's like, hey, you remember that thing that happened literally three minutes ago in the movie? Remember? Oh, you do. Play the clips anyway! So Minty broke the candy cane, Santa came and fixed everything, and everyone got all their Christmas gifts, and then there was a song to end the fucking movie. And it was all horrible. And quite frankly, after this, I don't think anyone bought My Little Pony toys ever again until Generation 4, because of the fact that everyone was horrified. Particularly of this purple pony. Seriously, it looks like it wants to eat me or something! Honestly, I have no idea who would go with this design choice. It's very, very creepy. Even for 2005. Actually, especially for 2005. So that's a very minty Christmas. It's horrible. Though honestly, what did you expect out of this movie? It's a movie that's aimed at little girls solely aimed at little girls. But even then, that doesn't excuse it for sending it mixed messages about nothing says Christmas like a pair of socks. Not to mention, the animation is inexcusably bad. This was 2005, and this is choppy as hell. 
Even for a straight-to-DVD Christmas cash-in, this is inexcusable. But is it downright terrible? Well, not really. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's bad. It's really bad. But I think if you were to stick a couple kids in front of this, they'd get some enjoyment out of it. Now, the key word there is some. I seriously doubt they're gonna get much out of this movie. But if you want to get them to shut up for about 40 minutes, then I'd recommend this movie to you. But really, that's it. There really isn't that much else to say about this movie. Aside from the fact that it was released October 25th, that's less than a week from Halloween, which is weird. They also did that earlier this year too, which is continuing a trend apparently that they've got going. And actually, this was the first movie in a decently long lineup of My Little Pony movies, but all those other ones are a whole other can of worms that I'm not gonna get into right now. But until then, my name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. Happy Holidays, everybody.